Hi, my name's Connor Kuklanis and you're watching the video Dwayne's Retraction Syndrome Etiology. In this video, we'll be discussing the cause of uh, this condition, uh, Dwayne's Retraction Syndrome. So Dwayne's Retraction Syndrome is also uh, commonly called simply Dwayne Syndrome, or you may come across also the term Dwayne's Co-Contraction uh, Syndrome, and, and this will become uh, clearer as we discuss the etiology of the condition. But the syndrome was first described by uh, a few ophthalmologists in the late 1800s, Jacob Stilling and uh, Sigmund Turk. But it wasn't until Alexander Duane in 1905 described Duane syndrome in more detail. And it was at this point that it was named after Alexander Duane. And patients essentially with the Duane syndrome have a limitation of ocular movements and their horizontal ocular movements, so abduction and or a deduction. And it's due to a co-contraction of the medial rectus and the lateral rectus. Co-contraction means that those two muscles are being innervated at the same time. So you're getting co-innovation, co-contraction, they're contracting at the same time. So why does this happen? Well, as you know, the sixth nerve is supplied, uh, sorry, the lateral rectus is supplied by the sixth nerve. So here we have the abducens nucleus and it supplies the lateral rectus. And we have the third nerve complex, which supplies, um, has a superior division and inferior division, which supplies the rest of the muscles other than the superior oblique. In uh, Duane's retraction syndrome, it's found that there's an agenesis or usually an agenesis of the sixth nerve nucleus or of the fibres. So there's some developmental anomaly of this nucleus and the fibres going to the lateral rectus. And it seems that in response to this, uh, the third nerve, the inferior division, and that which is supplying the medial rectus, actually splits and starts to innovate the lateral rectus as well. So now we have the third nerve not only supplying the medial rectus as well as all the other vertical muscles, the superior rectus, the inferior rectus, and the inferior oblique, but now it's also supplying the lateral rectus. And so what will happen is a co-innovation of both the medial rectus and the lateral rectus. So when the eye tries to attempt to adduct, which is going to be utilising the fibres that go to the medial rectus, well, it's going to be innovation of the lateral rectus also um, at the same time. So as you can imagine, if you're having a contraction of the medial rectus at the same time as contraction of the lateral rectus, this will produce uh, anomalous eye movements. Now, in Duane syndrome, patients will have different clinical characteristics. Some will have um, limitation of abduction, more so than adduction. Others will have more limitation of adduction than abduction, etc. And Huber found that or suggested that there may be uh, components of the lateral rectus, or you could divide the lateral rectus into three parts. One part being innervated by the sixth nerve, one part being innervated by the third, and another part being innervated. Uh, by no nerve, so in other words, it's become fibrotic. And it's suggested that if the portion normally innervated by the sixth nerve is large, in these patients you're likely to see uh, good abduction as opposed to a patient who may have a small proportion uh, innervated by the sixth nerve. This patient you may see significant reduction in abduction. Here we have another schematic diagram by Wright and Spiegel depicting Duane syndrome and the variations in the clinical characteristics of Duane syndrome. So in this first example, we have the third nerve innervating the medial rectus and we have the third nerve also innervating the lateral rectus. And here we have um, significant agenesis of the sixth nerve, so there's not um, really any innovation going to this lateral rectus. So in this instance, we'd expect that there'd be very little abduction. In the next scenario we have third nerve supplying the medial rectus and then also miswiring and third nerve supplying the lateral rectus. But we also have good innovation of the lateral rectus. In this instance we would have good 
abduction but poor adduction. Why would we have poor adduction? In this instance, the adduction is being affected by the co-contraction. So as the medial rectus is contracting, the lateral rectus is also contracting, not allowing that eye to adduct appropriately. And the final scenario here, we have, again, third nerve supplying the medial rectus, misrearing of the lateral rectus. And again, we have some agenesis of um, the six nerve fibres, but there is some innovation of the lateral rectus. And in this instance, the suggestion is that the abduction will be as equally affected as the um, adduction. So co-contraction on adduction will cause limitation on adduction, but also the lack of lateral rectus innovation from the sixth uh, will uh, likely cause uh, limited abduction that's equating to that of the medial rectus under action. So overall, Duane syndrome is related to the agenesis of the sixth nerve nucleus and or its fibres. In some uh, cases, the sixth nerve nucleus has been completely absent. So there is something going on with the sixth nerve, but also we have the third nerve miswiring and supplying the lateral rectus. And this, in effect, creates a limitation in eye movement. And whilst, yes, it's related to innovation, often we discuss uh, Duane syndrome as a mechanical restriction as the co-contraction of, um, of the medial rectus and the lateral rectus are what creates much of the features that we see in, in Duane syndrome. And so whilst the root cause is innovational, the uh, presentation appears to be mechanical. Okay, that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching.